Welcome to the Arena Unison Gamers. It is David with Unison Games Cafe coming to you with our first Blitz tournament. We've got the top table on stream today and we will be doing some commentary over the gameplay. Hopefully I can keep the background noise to a minimum. Um, We're going to blow up the cards so you guys can easily keep track of the action. Um, just situating the camera here. On the left, we have Reinar. Obviously, you guys know his ability. When you discard a card with six or more power during your action phase, you can intimidate in the trusty club, which gets plus one power when you do so. Opting for the club over the claws. So I sense we're going to see a lot of discarding. On the right, you've got Dorinthia with her trusty Dawnblade. Um, I mean... They're a, a match made in heaven. You've got some uh, equipment to help her as well. Once per turn, you can attack with the Dawnblade. The whole idea is that you want to attack twice per turn with the Dawnblade. Get those plus power tokens on there. Back on the left with Reinar. For the headpiece, we've got the Skullhorn. Let's you draw a card and discard a card at random, maybe triggering Reinar. You got your Scabskin Leather, Legendary. Rolling a d6 to get action points. Um, awesome ability. If you do roll poorly, you can use the Gambler's Glove to re-roll that die. Hopefully get something better. And then just to throw more randomness into it, you got the Bark Bone Strapping. As an instant, you can gain resources equal to half that die roll. So we will see if the dice are in favor of our uh, Reinar player. On the right-hand side, we've got the Hope Merchant's Hood to maybe get some better cards in your hand. Courage of Blade Hold from Crucible of War, allowing you to attack with your sword one less. Uh, if you guys are playing Flesh and Blood, you can see that sometimes only one resource is what can separate you from a good turn and a bad turn. So we've got that on the right-hand side. You guys see on camera the Brave Forge Bracers. That is your legendary from Welcome to Wraith. Once per turn, your next weapon attack gets plus one. Activate it only if you weapon if, if your weapon is going to hit this turn already. So that's for your second attack. Refraction bolters give you that go again when you need it when you hit. Um, some pretty uh, some pretty common choices I think for equipment here. Uh, got a little bit of a glare on the left hand side for Reinar, but you guys know it is Reinar and his club, and uh, I believe our warrior has uh, the first turn so let's see how things go this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be a bloodbath so um, away we go I would assume the warrior always leads with the dawn blade but oh and I think that's what we got going right here so, yeah we're just readjusting the camera here hold on to your seats we're good all right so dawn blade is coming in he is pitching for resource. Looks like a, shunt, a steel blade shunt. Hopefully that doesn't come to uh, bite him later on. That's a good card. Um, it's got two sources reef uh, floating. So coming in for three with that dawn blade. So first turn, brute player has the ability to draw back up at the end of this turn. So let's see if he defends against the dawn blade. Looks like he's defending with Primeval Bellow. All right, so that's a three for a three. Oh, and there comes the attack reaction. For those of you guys who probably know all too well, or maybe you don't, Warrior's keyword is reprise. So when you defend from hand, as you can see in Glint the Quicksilver, if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand, this chain link, you get to draw a card. So he's going to draw a card, and he's giving the Dawnblade go again, allowing him to then get his action point back and he does have two resources floating so looks like he's gonna let it resolve and then he's coming back in but i think yeah the brute player is realizing that you can only give it go again with dorinthia or you can only attack with it again when you hit and since he fully defended with it he did not hit good catch by the reinar player so a little bit of a, uh, a missed opportunity there. Let's see how he capitalizes. Looks like he's pitching a Smash Instinct for a Cadaverous Contraband. Coming in for six. 
Now, if this hits, you can put a non-attack action card from your graveyard on top of your deck. Uh, looks like Primeval Bellow is right there sitting, staring him in the face, so that is a good card to put back. Coming in for six. Nice, easy round number. Um, I don't want to say it's easily defended against, but... Oh, there is a Steel Blade Shunt. Four, six. There you go. So he had two of them in his opening hand. Defense against a weapon. It deals one damage to the attacker. That is not a weapon, but six for six. Can't complain about that. All right. No health total changes after that first flurry of action. Let's see what Dorinthia follows up with. I would assume another attack from the Dawnblade, but there is plenty of actions that augment the Dawnblade, give it more power. Uh, I do like a lot of the Crucible of War cards, like Spoils of War, but it uh, looks like he's just leading back in with the Dawnblade. Got a blue sink below as his resource. Uh, so he's got two floating. Reckless Swing as a defense reaction. He's going to block all of it. And it looks like he is also going to take two damage because he discarded a card with six or more power. And there is the health total. So on the opponent's turn, uh, Dorinthia takes two damage from a Reckless Swing. Not bad. I do like that card. It's a blue resource as well, so it can help you in a pinch, but blocking for four is very relevant in uh, in this game. Scabskin Leathers from the Brute Player, rolling a two. Not sure if he's going to like that. I think he's going to allow it, so Scabskin doesn't net him anything additional. He is getting one action point back for the action point he spent. Maybe he's got better plans for uh, those gambler's gloves. Ooh, coming in for a Savage Swing. And he is pitching the last card he has in his hand, Beast Within. Here we go. So it is being put into a graveyard from anywhere. So it's coming from his hand. He's going to lose a life. And it looks like he grabbed the card on top. So it must be an attack action. He is intimidating with Savage Swing off of Reinar's ability, which takes a card out of his opponent's hand so that he can defend with less cards. So as random as it is, it does kind of jar your plan. Sometimes you're only left with the card that you don't want to defend with. Oh, and another Steel Blade Shunt from the Warrior player. Um, that's four. So it looks like he is taking three down to 15 health. So that's three Steel Blade Shunts right in the beginning here for the Warrior. Interesting. When that Romping Club starts coming, uh, he's going to want those Shunts back. But, uh, we shall see. All right. Tried and true. Coming in with that Dawnblade for the Warrior. Coming in for three. Trying to get that hit. Trying to get that go again. Uh, looks like Brute is not defending. So, no reprise effects. Brute's going to take three damage. Go down to 16. And it looks like that might be it. Yeah. Took us three damage. Now, the brew is leading with a Blood Rush Bellow. Looks like discarding a Wrecker Romp. So this is going to give his Brute attacks plus two. Uh, he's going to draw two cards, which is what Blood Rush Bellow is great at doing. So that's going to restock his hand. He's got plus two damage coming on any Brute attacks, and that includes the weapon. So, again, if you guys are wondering... What makes a Brute attack? you got to look at that middle box. So the weapon says Brute, uh, and it has an attack on it. So there's that Primeval Bellow. Probably drew into that. So now his next card, his next Brute attack is going to get plus six. Two from the Bellow, and four from the Bellow. He has to discard a Primeval Bellow, so that got another Intimidate. So I'm assuming this last card, I mean, if it's the weapon, that's fine. But no, he's got a Wrecker Romp. Coming in for 13. Oh my gosh. Seven from the romp. Now he had to discard another random card. So I'm guessing he played out of arsenal here. Um, he had to discard another random card, which again let him intimidate. So that's three cards out of the warrior player's hand that he can possibly block with. And he's coming in for 13. And in Blitz, you only start with 20 life. Uh, this might... Okay, I was going to say he's going to get some equipment involved so looking like he's blocking for four 
and taking a wallop. So he took nine on that turn. Ouch. Now he is getting all those cards that he intimidated with back. And Sharpened Steel happens to be one of them. So he's going to lead in with his Dawnblade. Um, looks like he's popping Courage of Blade Hold. Okay, that's going to make his Dawnblade free. So I like the Courage of Blade Hold for that exact reason. Because, you know, if you, if you had to defend with some cards, you might have not have the resources. But here he goes. Coming in for six. Now, Brute Player only has four cards in hand after playing that entire turn out. So will he... I mean, he could take some damage here and come right back at him. Oh, there we go. So no blocks from the Brute Player. The Warrior comes over the top with Overpower to give it another plus two. So he came in for eight, and Brute just took it all to the face. I'm guessing the Brute Player has a pretty good hand... And he's staring at that six health from the warrior. Wow, he's got another blood rush bellow. Pitching the wreck a romp. Oh, and there's the six strength. That is going to discard off the intimidate. That's going to allow him to draw two cards. Such an awesome combination of effects. So now you took a card out of your opponent's hand. You drew back up the two. The only thing is you got to make sure that you have an attack. He still has his scab skin, he still has his chest piece, and his gloves to re-roll if he needs something a little bit more. But let's see if he grabs something good. Looks like he's using his rest of his resources, and some additional... Oh boy, here's the Alpha Rampage. That has Intimidate on it. He has to discard another card. He only has a Drone of Brutality, which is going to Intimidate another card away. Ugh, he's explaining that the Drone of Brutality... Goes back on the bottom of his deck. That Alpha Rampage is a 9, plus the 2 from the Blood Rush Bellow. Ugh, coming in for 9. We're going to see everything from the player. So 5 from the Warrior player. And that is right on the dot. 6 health. And there you go. Our winner is Reinar. Go right on to Game 2. We've got Reinar. The defending champion at the top table going up against Bravo, the Guardian. Bravo using the original weapon, Anothos. So probably have a lot of blues. He does have the legendary tectonic plating. Gives you that seismic surge token, making your attack one less resource, which, again, could mean everything. Um, you got the Helm of Eisen's Peak as your headpiece. Classic there with a Crater Fist from Crucible of War. Looks like the Guardian is using his Tectonic Plating. Give himself a Seismic Surge token for next turn. That'll make his next attack a little bit cheaper. It has to be a card, you know, so you can't make the Anoth Anothos swing any cheaper. And looks like he's getting an Aura out into the field. So Stamp Authorities enter the arena. If you've got two or more cards in your pitch zone that cost three or greater, which he does, he'll get those benefits. He's going to get plus one to his card draw because his intelligence goes up. And that ore is going to stay on the battlefield for a little bit. Brute player. Let's see how he starts his turn. Lost no cards. Coming right out for nine. Not a bad thing. Had to pitch two cards to pay for it. He's intimidating away. Three cards off the Intimidate. So it looks like he pitched a Blood Rush Bellow, which I don't think is accurate. So he, I think he got him in the wrong order here. So he doesn't want to... There you go. He doesn't want to lose Massacre to pay for it. He wants that to be discarded. So he's got to switch it up. So it looks like the Guardian player is going to let him reverse. He wants to pay... Yeah, there's some bad math right there. There we go. So he's going to want to use the Breakneck Battery to pay for the Alpha Rampage so that the random card is Massacre, which when Massacre is discarded, that's when you Intimidate. So that's how he's going to get to three. So that's what you're going to see right here is kind of a reversal. So Breakneck Battery and the other card is paying for the Alpha Rampage. The only card he has left is Massacre. That lets him Intimidate because he pitched it. He intimidates off the Alpha Rampage naturally, and because he discarded Massacre off of Reinar, 
you get to intimidate again. And that's three cards intimidated. That is not a bad opening hand for the Brute player. You got nine damage coming in, Bravo. What are you going to do about it? Well, he did have some additional cards because of the stamp authority. And looks like he's blocking for nine. Wow. So, big block. Still has three cards next turn. That's not bad. And uh, away we go. We got even health totals after the first swings. Seismic Surge token is going to explode at the beginning of the turn. So, next Guardian attack action is one less. There's a lot of fours um, in this game. That'll uh, bring it down to three, which is really useful. Looks like he's going to use his Tectonic Plating again to get another token for next turn. He could have lost what he wanted to use. No, nope, he's got it. Buckling Blow, which will now be three, is coming in for eight. So he pitched a blue card to pay for Buckling Blow, because it only costs three now, because of the size and surge token. Buckling Blow, if it hits, will put a minus one counter on an equipment, making things weaker. Things like scab skin having two armor is really helpful to get a minus one counter. And then in Crucible of War, you've got the new Mangle card, which destroys weapons, or destroys equipment, I should say, with counters on them. It looks like he is defending with his scab skin and his chess piece and a card from hand, Savage Swing. So he's got six committed, so that this crush does not happen. Oh, but over the top as a reaction, we've got a pummel. For plus four, bringing it to 12 damage, which unless he's got a defense reaction, is going to initiate that crush. And the Brute player takes six damage and loses another minus one on one of his equipment. I believe the... Yep, and there's the... Um... There's a discard from the Pummel. And it looks like the Bravo player is putting... Another minus one counter on uh, the scab skin. So it loses one just for being defended with. And it's going to lose one from the buckling blow. So scab skin down to zero. Still has its ability, does not get discarded. Brute player coming in with a romping club. Looks like for four. No cards have been discarded. Brute player, or Guardian, defends for three. He's going to take one damage. Not bad, not bad. All right, Seismic Surge. That triggers, beginning of the turn. Let's see if we've got an attack that is slightly cheaper. Looks like pitching a Crippling Crush. Okay, I mean, that's a, a costly card. So it looks like he made another token. He is going to destroy Helm of Eisen's Peak. So it looks like there isn't an attack. That is going to give him another intelligence, which is the value that lets you increase your hand size. And uh, drawing up to five. And Arsenal card, so pretty good grip. Oh, here we go. We've seen this before. Blood Rush Bellow. So discarding a random card. It's that one. And of course, it is a six power or more. Here comes the Intimidate off of Reinar. Here comes drawing two cards for Blood Rush Bellow. Still has one left. Let's see where he follows up. This is going to be plus two strength if it's a brute card. Another Alpha Rampage. Wow. Has to discard his last card. He gets the Intimidate off the Alpha Rampage. He gets the Intimidate off the discard. And away we go, coming in for 11. That is a doozy. It looks like he's committing both cards. So both of his remaining cards in his hand and the tectonic plate. That is eight. All right, he's not letting uh, the brute player get him down to... Another good combo. Um, life looks like he is going to take a little damage here and drop to 16. Cleaning up some uh, 
health total stuff here. Just making sure we got the right health totals, which we do. Seismic Surge off on the Bravo side. Let's see if you can actually lead up with an attack this turn. Sometimes you don't draw what you need and you can't attack. All right, we are pitching to bring in a Showtime. All right, so he's going to go get what he needs. Showtime comes into play. You're going to go find a Guardian Attack action. And then uh, next turn, it's going to blow up. So it stays in play and you actually draw a card. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn. He is grabbing that Mangle. So Mangle, if it hits, it's going to destroy an equipment that has a minus one counter on it. He did put a minus one counter on the Scab Skin Leathers. So that, I'm assuming, is what he is going to try to get rid of before the opponent gets to use it. And there it is. So that's one less cheaper because of the Surge. So he's pitching a blue card to pay for it. Coming in for eight. All right. It's blocking for three. I'm guessing there's going to be more. And there's the Reckless Swing as a defense reaction. Let's see if the Brute player gets it discarded. Yep, Drone of Brutality. So that's going to be two damage to the Guardian. And looks like only one damage is going to leak through unless we have... I assume there's no Pummel. Yep, looks like one damage. All right, that was a good defense by the Brute. Good old Reckless Swing. Let's see, it looks like we are getting a Skull Horn activation. Draw a card, discard a card. It is a Bonehead Barrier. That's not going to trigger Reinar. Okay. Brute player, or Guardian player, has a question about the Skull Horn. Gonna look like activate the Barkbone Strapping. Ooh, rolls a six. Three resources for free. Will this be a club activation, or do we got a card left in the hand? So don't need to use the Gambler's Glove for that. Uh-oh, here we go. Cost is zero. Primeval Bellow, discarding his last card, which is going to trigger the Intimidate. So your next Brute Attack gets plus four. I'm assuming now this is going to be the club. Yep, here we go. So club is coming in for nine because it's getting the plus one off of the discarded card from Primeval Bello and the plus four. So coming in from nine with the club. There's a good sequence of uh, defense. You guys can see that we've got a potion in the opponent's hand that has no defense value. So that doesn't feel good. Let's see. We got three, four. Ooh, looks like we're sacrificing the Crater Fist. And going to use the last little bit of the Tectonic Plating to defend and take some damage to go down to 10 health. We see some big swings coming from the Brute. 10 health might seem safe, but I'm not sure how safe it is. Showtime is going to trigger at the beginning of the turn for the Bravo player. He is going to draw a card. He's got that potion. I see he's got a Righteous Cleansing. And I want to say maybe that's a staunch defense on the corner. Maybe a Blessing of Deliverance. I'm guessing that's going to be the resource card. Let's see if he tries to get in with... Okay, he's pitching the Energy Potion to activate Bravo. So this is going to give his attack actions that cost three or greater, which is pretty much all of them, dominate. And there is seven is definitely more than three. So not only does it have crush, but it also has dominate. If this hits or does four damage, oh, bonehead barrier. He had two rolling and he got a two. Is he going to keep it? Is he going to, oh, he's using the gambler's glove. Oh, there's another six. That is the best roll you can get. That's only blocking six right now, so Righteous Cleansing will make it through. Let's see if he's got anything else to defend against it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, and in the other Reckless Swing. 
Wow. We've got some good luck for the Brute player here. Being able to randomly get the six and the Reckless Swing to block a full 10 Righteous Cleansing. Awesome. And do two damage to the Bravo player with the Reckless Swing. He's just drawn up to four cards. The Brute player exhausting all of his resources on that last defense. Let's see if the Bravo player can capitalize on a skipped turn. Did not want that Righteous Cleansing hitting. Possibly taking out one of his next Blood Rush Bellows or maybe an Alpha Rampage off the top of his deck. Uh, Righteous Cleansing is a very cool card. Let's see what this Bravo player has. He's going to activate Bravo's ability. Okay. Must be coming in with something. Wants to give it Dominate. Let's see if he follows it up with another Righteous Cleansing. That would be the way to go. But not sure what he drew. Choke Slam. Okay. So if it deals four damage or more to a hero, their attack action cards can't gain power. Uh, we've already seen Blood Rush Bellow. We've seen Primeval Bellows. So we know he likes to gain power. Interesting. Got defense from three. Oh, there's the pummel coming over the top. So this is going to have him discard a card if it hits. I think we've seen both Reckless Swings, so I don't see this not hitting. Okay. Take some damage there. We're down to eight apiece. Here comes a Smash Instinct. Six coming in. You got Intimidate from Reinar himself. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you got Intimidate from Smash Instinct. Just right off the get. Right off the, uh, the get-go there. Blocking with five. Okay, deciding on the pummel, decides to use it, blocking for five, gonna take one. Okay, seems good over there. Back to the Guardian player. Got big swings. Okay, oh, we're, we're taking a skip turn, it looks like here. Pitching to get a Seismic Surge token. I would assume Arsenal a card here. Okay, here we go. Brute sees blood in the water. Here comes the Barrage and Beatdown. It's going to give plus three. And the Blood Rush Bellow. Paying for it. Has to pitch one card. It is the Beast Within. Here we go. We're going to draw some cards here. This is going to get him the attack action he needs. Looks like he had to draw twice. Oh, just draw, drew once. Just drew once. Intimidating off of that. Now, because he discarded the Beast Within, he's drawing two cards of Blood Rush Bellow. Should have a pretty good grip of cards. And it's at plus five, whatever he actually does play. This one's gonna hurt. Barraging Bellow, or Beatdown, I should say. I'm not sure if I misspoke. Barraging Beatdown adds that power if he doesn't defend with two cards from hand, two non-equipment. So one more Intimidate is going to stop it. Barraging Bighorn is a card drawn. You have to discard a random card. And that's what... Oh, there you go. When Barraging Bighorn defended by less than two, it has go again. And he's going to get the Barraging Beatdown, and he only has the one card, so he can't defend. 11 coming through can only defend for three, and that's going to deal eight damage, which is just enough. Oh, and the Bravo player had an unmovable, so that would have blocked a good seven damage, but Intimidate got the win. Brute is 2-0 and oh at the top table. Very good. So yeah, we had some uh, we had some good randomization there. All right, looks like our last match is another warrior of a different kind. From Crucible of War, you got Kasai, the Centauri Cell Sword. 
allows the second sword attack to be for free, and you get copper tokens when you hit with your weapons at the end of the turn. Let's see if those come into play. Copper tokens usually used with cash in. You'll notice they decided to switch spaces. We've got the brute player on the right now. We've got the warrior player on the left. And I think we're ready to go. Now we do know that the warrior player is not using the legendary uh, Brave Forge Bracers. We got an alpha rampage coming in from the brute. So intimidate straight up. We're going to discard a random card. Cadaverous contraband he is intimidating away. He is blocking for six on the warrior, taking no problems on the first turn. We are drawing back up the four, but he is taking three damage. He can't let the brute get up on health. He swings in hard. Oh, Scar for Scar. So, gets go again because he has less health and coming in for four. Brute player does not defend. All right, takes the four right on the chin. Here comes a go again Iron Song Determination. It's going to get plus one and dominate. Coming in for three damage now with the plus one. And Brute is defending for three. Not letting him get up on him. Let these swords hit. Oh, he doesn't have a choice. Here comes the route. Def uh, attack reaction coming in for plus three on this weapon. He's up to six. He is going to take those three. We're popping the refraction bolters. Gives go again. Here comes the other Centauri Saber. It is one less to attack with it because of Kasai. Coming in for two. Add in a little extra damage. And looks like we have a defensive two. And Scour the Battlescape is going to go bottom. Now, the Kasai player is saying that the Centauri Saber goes up. And uh, because of, it was defended with, by an attack action. So that's why he got through with the three. He hit with two swords this turn. Kasai lets him get two copper tokens. Again, assuming he's going to try to use the card cash in. Oh, we got some rolling here. Scabskin Leathers. Popping the gambler's glove. Maybe we get a better roll. We got a four. That's not bad. So he's going to get two action points from these scab skin leathers. Let's see how he uses those action points. First one is with a savage swing. Just coming in for seven. Going to have to discard a random card here. That's the only card he has is Beast Within. Here we go again. Let's see. He, he, oh, he's drawn another card. Took another damage. Drawn another card, took another damage. Draw another card, all right. So looks like it took three times and he took the appropriate damage. Down to nine for the Brute player, but he's got a few cards in his hand. So he's coming in for seven. Kasai is defending for three. Let's see if we have any defense reactions. But I feel like that four is gonna make it through. It does. Four damage through on the warrior. We do have another action point because of those scab skin leathers for the brute. Can he utilize it? Does he have enough resources? He did draw some cards. Here we go. Coming in with a ropping club. Now it is coming in for five because he did discard a card. He discarded that beast within today. Or this turn, I should say. Not today. Well, today, sure. Defending with a hit and run that blocks three of it. He is going to take another two. All right. And just like that, we're down 11 and nine. Kasai is still winning. This is the top table. These are the two best decks at this tournament right now. Kasai is also undefeated. All right, I think we're going to be leading in. Yeah, leading in with the good old Centauri Saber. Very similar to Katsu, the ninja. Oh, looks like no defense. Coming in with the Razor Reflex. All right, it's coming in for five. No Reckless Swing. I thought we would see a Reckless Swing from the Brute. Five damage on the chin. He must like his hand. Let's see. 
Barraging the beat down. Here we go. So again, we're trying to get it so that he can only defend with one card. Here comes the breakneck battery. It's going to be plus three if he can only defend with one card. So he's already taken two. He's got six incoming. He has to defend with both. Or else he's taken nine. And he does. He defends for five. So the plus three does not get... He's using, as an instant, Barkbone Strapping for more resources. Let's see what he's going to use with these. Coming in with the Romping Club. All right, so I missed the go again with Breakneck Battery, allowing him to attack with that Romping Club. Very cool. That's the thing about Brute. Usually you don't have additional resources, but that Barkbone Strapping really helped out to get that card out and let him attack for another five. So it is anyone's game right now. Five to four. All right, where is Valor? This is going to be plus three. He's going to make all of his attacks cheaper by popping his chest piece, Courage of Blade Hold. Where is Valor is going to give him plus three on this weapon. And go again, I believe. And he's got both weapons are one less. So let's see what the brute... The brute player does not have a lot of life to take any of this on the chin. Especially with him threatening go again here. Oh, here comes the bonehead barrier. Can he roll a five? Oh, he did! <laughs> Perfect. Man, bonehead barrier, two games now. Exactly what he needed. If that was a one, that was going to hurt. Brute is thinking five damage seems pretty easy to do. And it looks like he might be fishing with the skull horn. Okay. And discard a random card here. Make a good one. There goes a Barraging Bighorn, so that discard is going to, there you go, take a card out of his hand for Intimidate. That would have been a good attack, though. Maybe he needed that. Let's see. I think some of the randomness of Brute is inherently the fun of Brute, so... Romping Club in for 5 again getting plus 1 because of that discarded card. Very good. That's why he, this player is playing the Romping Club anyway. Um, really taking advantage of those times that maybe you get you lose your card that you wanted to play with. At least you get plus one on the club. So let's see if we get any defense. This could be a good opportunity. I mean, you only have five health. You can't really not defend. Okay, there's a defend from three. We haven't seen any pummels from the Brute player, so... No threat there. Down to three for the warrior player. Can he get that last li little bit of health away from the brute player to take the win? Spoils of War will help. Next weapon attack gets plus two and go again. Very good. This sword is coming in for four with go again. Let's see if the one thing they remember about Centauri Sabres is that if they're defended by an attack action card, which the Brute has a ton of, you know, his barraging uh, bighorns and savage swings are all attack actions, the sword goes up one. So let's make sure. I will say that could be, um, could be a detriment for warrior players. So no attack actions, which is good. Blocks for four because of the minus one on the legs. Razor Reflex comes over the top. Threatening three damage, which the Brute player takes. He has go again. Will he come in with that Saber? Kasai allows you to... Come in at one cheaper with a Centauri Saber? 
No, he makes a copper token. That, I believe, was a misplay. He should have been able to use Kasai's ability to make that Centauri Saber come in for two to threaten at least more damage to take some more cards out of the Brute Player's hand. There's a lot going on on the Warrior side. Things like this happen. Let's see if the Brute Player can capitalize. Three damage is not a lot of health, especially with Intimidate. Let us see. It is a nail biter. No one wants to make a rash decision at this point. Will he take advantage? Looks like we're rolling for scab skin. Rolled a four. Not bad. Two action points. Could threaten two attacks here. Club being one of them. Does he have the resources for it? He did lose a card out of his hand. With that primeval bellow on the defense. He's pitching to pay. Blood Rush. Oh no, Massacre. Here we go. So he has not discarded a card yet. So no Intimidate. No plus damage. So this is just six damage straight up. Ooh, good defense of five. Taking only one. And then the Romping Club coming in for four. Oh, but he only blocked for... Oh, again... Again, a mistake. There was not a discarded card. The Rocket Club is only four damage, not five damage. Player one, Kasai, concedes, thinking it's coming in for five. Oh, and we have a winner with an asterisk. It came down to the wire. A couple misplays will sometimes be what decides the winner of these games. Thank you all for joining us for our first Blitz tournament. If you like this gameplay, please like and subscribe. Make sure you join us for our next tournament. We will continue to put these on our site so that you guys can see how Flesh and Blood is played and uh, some of the intricacies of how turns go. Thanks for joining me. This is David with Unison Games Cafe.